Hey guys, this is Dr. Robinson with the Clan War Tracker. Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the, the functions of the Clan War Tracker as well as how to get up and running. So, uh, if you go to clanwartracker.com, the first page you're going to see is this. Uh, you guys are going to need to create an account. It's pretty simple to do. You click the button and go through. In my case, I've got an account already, so I'm just going to log in. First thing you're going to see once you log in is that you either need to join a clan or create a clan. For most of you, you're going to be creating a clan because you'll be the first person to be using it. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to fill out the data. The only thing you might have some trouble with here, uh, I'll fill it out for you. So, uh, not real dedicated is our current clan. Um, so our clan tag actually can be found inside Clash of Clans. If you go to the actual clan tab, you're going to see a clan tag, and it's down here. Uh, I outlined it in red for you. And it's got a hashtag at the start, and the hashtag is not necessary. Either way, you'll be able to put it in, and we'll be able to find you. Hashtag one two three four five six seven eight, and then your clan handle, and then uh, this is the password, and it's not your specific password. It's going to be a password that other members can use to log in and find your clan. If you wanted to join it, what you would do is you would put the clan tag number one two three four five six seven eight, and then whatever the password is. Um, in this case, the password is Clan War Tracker, but you don't want to use a personal password for that. You want to use something that you're going to give out to your entire clan. So I'm going to join this one. Now, if this is the first time that you're going into a clan, the first thing it's going to ask you to do, it's going to have a little blue hyperlink here that says Add Clan Members. What you would do is go into Clan or Member Management page. You'd be able to add members here. Now you can see I've already added a few of them. I'll add a couple more. Basically, you're just going to type in a name. Uh, like Ryan, I'm going to say he's a Town Hall 8, and I'm going to add him, and it's just going to populate down in that list below. What's important to note is that there's different privileges. Uh, we have a list of them up here, but what you really need to know is that most of the people in your clan are going to be members. Those are going to be the people that go in, they input the information related to their attacks and their, their war calling, and that's kind of it. Your editors are going to be the people that go through and they verify the attacks. They can update information for other people. So I could go in and put an attack for Jenny or Frank and say how they did. Um, and then also I'm going to be the person who verifies everything. And then the admin's kind of the guy who, who gets to put in what the value of each star is going to be for our clan. In our case, we have three admin, the three of us that made Clan War Tracker. And every other person in our clan is an editor uh, because we trust them. And then if we have new members, we make them a member for a couple of wars and then we'll bump them up to an editor because uh, we just want to make sure nobody's going to go in and start deleting wars or messing with things that they shouldn't. Uh, the final thing you need to know is that you can archive a, a player. Let's say that Jenny here uh, is no longer part of our clan. I can go ahead and click archive. And what that does, it boots them from the clan. So the next thing we're going to want to do once we have all the members we need so we're going to add a war, and we're going to fight real dedicated, which is who we are. And the war messages you can use um, to say something like, you know, have all your attacks in by 9 p.m. EST, or you can be a little more specific. This clan uses Lava Loon. We also want to choose what stage we're in. So if this clan war just started in game, we're going to be in the preparation stage too. Uh, and we're going to have 29 or 23 hours and 59 minutes left until the war starts. And then you're going to be able to choose your call time. And so you can see we have a lot of options under call time here. And then finally you have the option to do completed wars. So if you have um, an old way of keeping track of everybody's stats, you can do a completed war and just kind of fill in all that information. So I'm going to submit and start this war. The first thing it's going to have me do is choose my participants. There's a couple of ways I can do that. First thing I want to do is choose how many people will be in the war. If it's a 10-man war, 15, 20, or 5, I'm going to do 5 just to keep it simple. Some of the things you can do is you can click and drag. So Frank actually isn't in this war. So I'm going to drag him down below. See, he's now 7, which means he's not in the green area, which means he's not going to be participating in this war. I, however, am in this war, so I'm going to drag me up. And I'm actually number 1, so I'll drag to 1. Now, if I wanted to do it a different way, I can click the down arrow and move me all the way out. Or I can type in the number. So say I want to be number one. I just click number one. And it'll push me up to uh, the war rank of one. And I can also click drop from war. And that'll put you at the bottom of the list. So I'm no longer in this war. It moved me down to 10. But I'm actually in this war. You can change this once the war starts. However, you can't change the people in the war. So I have to make sure I have the correct 40 people in the war. But I can change the rankings afterwards. I've got my five people going into the war. And I'm going to click the begin war button. Uh, just to note, you can see up at the top here, we've got tracker progress. This is kind of an indication for you guys on what you need to be doing uh, in each stage. So obviously the first one's to add the war, and so I'm going to click begin war, and it's going to take us to number two. 
which is strategize, and it turns number one green, so we know we've completed that. So the strategize section is great because I can start calling my target. So I'm ranked number two, and I'm going to attack their number two. So their number two is the Town Hall 9. Now, if you're an admin, you can choose who you want to attack who. So uh, if I wanted to set up who's attacking to who for the entire war, I could say, hey, John's going to attack him. Um, but in this case, I'm going to just do it for me. So I'll call that target. It takes me to do a strategize page. So this gives me a little form here, so I can make some comments. And then I can take my strategize. And what's cool about this is first I upload the enemy base. So I've got an enemy territory here. And you can do this from mobile. And I actually recommend you do the, uh, the screenshot uploading from mobile. And then I can strategize. So when I click the strategize button, it's going to pop down an image. I'm going to be able to use stamps. So this is a little more mobile friendly. So I'm going to use Go Wee Wee. Maybe I'll say I'm going to put my golems here and here. I'm going to drop a uh, witch, 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 witch. Uh, I also forgot that I want to drop in hogs to try to pull their CC. So maybe I can drop two or three hogs here. Once I'm done, I click the save button. I'm going to be able to view that strategy. And I can kind of animate and see what they did, right? So now you can see, oh, a golem popped, golem popped, a couple of witches. So you can see the order of which I want to attack in, which is really nice. So I've strategized. I've got them. And so now what I can do is I can click on the war room over on the left side and go back to the war. What I think is cool as well is if you look on this left side, it tells you that there's notifications, three changes to rank two. So it's going to show you that I've uploaded a couple of things. And you can actually click your, your little notification button up here, which will tell you what's going on. Now these notifications exist only for the current war. So when this war ends, uh, all these notifications go away and a new set will appear when I start a new war. Um, and it tells you how long till it expires. Right now it says 35 hours and 53 minutes. What's nice about that is it's accounting for the fact that the war is not going to start for 23 hours. So it's 23 hours and 59 minutes plus my, my half of the remaining time. All right, so I'm still in the prep phase. In the prep phase, I can cancel a call. So I can click that cancel button. Say I want to cancel. It still leaves the data that I've already put in, like the town hall level. But now it's open for somebody else to call. So John wanted to call that one. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Right now, I'm in prep. I'm going to actually push me into the actual progress of the war. So I'm going to update that. Um, you guys can see that there's a little settings button, a wrench up in the, the right here. And that's going to take you back into your, your settings to update participants or, or the timer. So now that the war started, you can see that they've got half the remaining time, so half of a full day. And so I'm going to put in the info for Doug. Now, you don't have to be an admin to do this. Anybody can put in the info. And so what it's asking for is what's the opponent's reward, right? And we use the gold value. Most of them are going to be within 300,000 and 500,000. It, it adjusts based on your town hall level. But in this case, I'm going to say 442, 100, okay? And that is, that is the amount of gold that I would get for beating them. And that's going to be their bounty. So I can update that. And so now it shows you that Doug's got three stars. We've won all the stars that you can get from this. Now in John's case, let's say John attacked. This guy's only worth 400. John attacked and he got one star. So we can see there's only one star. So we've got two available. And now I can jump in and say, you know what? I want to call this target. I can do a new strategy if I want. Great first strategy. Way to one star it. And so you can actually have a little forum here of things that are going on. If I go back to this war room and say, okay, well, I got a new strategy. I did better than John. I three starred it. And I can update that. I can talk trash if I want, but I don't need to. It's going to show here that John got that first star, but I got the second and third star. And those values are worth a lot. So I did much better than John, obviously. Um, and you go through and you can update the data here. But what's going to happen eventually is that the war is actually going to complete. So in progress, the stage ends in zero hours and in two minutes. So we updated the amount of time, and it's telling us we've got one minute to the war ends. Our bar is almost red. Um, once the war ends, we'll be able to go in and, and update the final amount of stuff. You can see we're on battle day now. Um, we're waiting for that to finish so we can update our war input and then calculate the war. Until then, I'll show you our clan settings. So under clan settings, it gives you the, the updates you can make, such as the password and the tag. Um, it also gives you your, your configuration for the calculations. You can change them if you want. Um, we found that these balance really well. 
Um, Days of Past War is a number of recent wars. These go here. Uh, you can change those. Uh, once we have more statistics being displayed, you might want to change them more. But for now, I leave them at 30 and 3. There's no real reason to change it. And then recalculating all wars. If you made changes to the first, second, and third star values and you want those to apply retroactively, you would have to click this button. But now our war has ended, right? So we can see that our, our slider's gone from 3 to 4, the war input. Um, we've got this button that says Calculate War down here. We're actually going to move that and make it bigger and easier to see. Um, and what we can do now is we can go in and start calculating the war. So I can go into my enemy territory input. I can look up on uh, Clash of Clans what they are. So we have an 8. So we can go next to our attacks. We could put in what everybody did here. Uh, it's easy to find if you go into My Clan under the Clan War Log. Uh, and so we could say he's going to attack opponent number one and two, putting a total number of stars. Now, you can do destruction if you want. A lot of times you'll see people get one star and they'll have 97%. So you'll know that their timing slightly off, but their strategy is good. So if that was important, you could track that. Turn off destruction. So what you're going to see now is that uh, it double checks when I click the defenses button. It double checks for to make sure that we haven't given away too many stars. So in this case, Christopher and Doug both attacked opponent rank number one. They got three total stars, which is uh, a thing that can happen, but they can't both get three new stars. So you can get two new stars and you can get one new star. Go to defenses. Defense is important. I recommend you guys put it in. So uh, we're going to say nobody got more than two starred. Everybody's two and two. Nice and even. We can review and submit and it'll check for any errors we might have. It gives you a quick rundown. It shows us that we actually all only used one attack because we were so good we didn't need to use more. We can go ahead and save that war. And now it's starting to give us stats for the actual war. So under past wars, we'd be able to find that first war versus real dedicated. We can go ahead and edit and change some of the, the actual uh, input if we wanted to. We can change what people are doing from the war input button up here and, and adjust those stats if I needed to. I don't need to in this case. So I'm just going to go back to my dashboard. I can also click add war to add a new one. Um, but these are the basic settings that I've run you through here. If you guys do have any questions, you can always find us through the support button in the top right. See how it says support. Chat with developers. Uh, unless we're sleeping, we'll respond to you within a couple of minutes. Uh, we get those right to our phone and we really want to be able to support you guys with any of the questions you might have. Finally, uh, we have an FAQ for some of the more popular questions. Feel free to submit things that you'd like to see in there. And most importantly, we have an about us. Tells you who we are, what we're doing, and a little donate button. Feel free to send us a, a couple of bucks. That way we can buy John a couple beers. He's our main developer, and uh, he definitely functions better with alcohol in the system. Again, if you have any questions, uh, find us through the support button, and I hope to see you guys all in-game soon. We're constantly making updates and feature changes, so request those, and, and we're happy to cater to you guys. Thanks for listening.